Hope for a Cell knows the significance of change. After agonizing attempts, it took her five years to welcome her first baby. With two children under three, she was treated for colon cancer. Years later, her marriage of 18 years dissolved. Armed with a psychology and coaching degree and discovering she could own her own power, Fursell became a guide for other women going through unexpected events. She helps them learn that their history does not shape their future. Please welcome Hope Fursell. Thank you for that warm introduction. You're so welcome. So before we jump into <clears throat> the rest of the topics, what is your favorite memory as a child? My favorite memory is water skiing as oh. a little girl. I grew up on a small lake in Michigan and was thrown in the water really with my dad holding me not soon after I learned to walk really. So I have my most memories at Walnut Lake in the summers growing up. Who was the person who left the most positive impact on you? I always think about my grandmother, my grandmother, Marion. She learned to drive at the age of 50, became healthy and fit and got a job and did all of that after raising a family in Detroit. How old were you when you married, and did you always want children? I was 27, hmm. and I always wanted children, always. So you had a really good sense of who you were by then. You knew yourself a little bit by then, didn't you? I had traveled and lived abroad and certainly had been fairly independent. It's all relative, right? Yeah. Yeah, it is. When did you get to that moment when you finally decided that you would use a surrogate? It took probably at least a good three years of trying with naturally and then IVF and, um, it took a lot of years before I realized it would be a gift. And it really was a doctor. After traveling to a doctor in Colorado, Dr. Schoolcraft, I would say it was under his care that he finally really looked at me and said, it's time to look on for other options. So what was that process like? Just going through that. It's not a simple process for either side. So what what is that like when you find, do you have to kind of interview people to figure out who's the best fit? How does that work? Yeah, well, I am a fertility life coach at Pulling Down the Moon, which is a holistic center in Chicago. And we help a lot of women through the process. And it's a long process to give everything you have to your original dream and then to shift and pivot. Uh, we do it really graciously and have some amazing agencies, particularly in Chicago and in the U.S., for helping the process and helping to find women that not only are physically prepared and well equipped and have shown that their body welcomes and delivers healthy babies. But in addition that they have the proper family unit and that they psychologically are prepared for this very unique experience. Mm. And it is unique because usually when you're having a baby, oh, I've never had children. So I can only assume that when you are pregnant and you go through that process, you bond with that child and then to suddenly give it to somebody else, that that's quite remarkable, really. Yeah, it is. Did you ever consider adoption before this or, or was this your option that you preferred? This was, uh, this unfolded beautifully. How old are your children now? 12, almost 13, and 14, two boys. Wow. Months apart from the same wonderful 
angel, our surrogate mother. Now, cancer, that is not a word anyone wants to hear. How long did your treatment take? My cancer journey was also a couple of years. From the initial removal of the tumor, followed by 12 rounds of chemo, and chemotherapy left me bedridden for almost 10 months, really. I mean, I had some energy in between, but when you're working with the colon, I think it really, my energy level and my level of nausea was quite extreme during the chemotherapy. And then I had uh, probably another year or two, and then I decided to have a elective proactive surgery at Sloan Kettering in New York with the desire to remove any organs that were at risk. Mm -hmm. That surgery itself was a difficult one as well. Do you feel that has helped you stay kind of cancer-free? Do you still go for checkups all the time? Very much so, yes. I'm currently under the care at the University of Chicago, and I'm under very good surveillance at North Shore, near where I live. So it's a big part of my life. Yeah, yeah. It's life-changing, I imagine. So how did you quell your children's fears when you went through both cancer treatment and then also the divorce? Well, I have been blessed that me and my co-parent, my ex-husband, we both believe in therapy and coaching. Mm -hmm. So my boys have been blessed to have wonderful care and a lot of extra mental support from therapists and psychiatrists ever since they were little in an effort to prepare for them to understand they have a unique story and then to cope with the way I had to parent during their very young, young years. I'm, th I'm at least, I would say, 11 years clean. So these boys only knew when I was really sick from their early, early years. Oh, wow. I'm lucky that I have been very healthy and very strong and have enjoyed being with them and active with them. So, but my son just had his bar mitzvah and oh, as cool. part of his mitzvah project, he is launching a website to collect money uh, to continue the support of the research at the University of Chicago. Oh, wow. That's that's pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah. So they it's all impacted us. It's about facing our fears, about being present, about being as um, gracious as we can in the moment. And with me and my children, I think because I have had such wonderful experts guiding me to be as real as you can with, with providing security and being age appropriate and mm -hmm. being as authentic as we can be with our children. Yeah, because it, there's, well, back in, in the generation when I grew up, it, people never really spoke about such things or intricate details. So you were always left in the dark, and that seems to be how you kind of grew up in those families. They never really talked about anything, even once they were all adults. I understand. So I saw a TikToker recommend that women get lawyers when they are faced with divorce, even if it feels like it's going to be amicable, because the partner invariably always gets a lawyer. Hopefully your divorce was fairly amicable or was it <laughs> it took it took a while but yeah we're very close friends but That's it good. took a lot of also experts and it took some time certainly yeah yeah there's a lot to unpack in a marriage exactly. especially for so long and especially if you mm -hmm. have kids so yeah exactly so the support system you had were, you know, family, professionals, or a mixture of everybody? During the divorce? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I actually started with a therapist that had also been through a divorce, a woman that was a few years older than me. 
I found that extremely helpful. I was part of a support group. There was four of us during the pandemic, all homebound, all going through a divorce, homeschooling. Many of us, including myself, still cohabitating. So it was through Zoom and that I think that that group was really powerful. And then girlfriends who would recommend other women nearby that often became friends who were divorcees or about to go through it. And, and that's why I offer a lot of group coaching, because I find that by being with people who have walked in your shoes or are walking through it at that time, only offer the true insight of what it feels to be at that perspective. So, and I find women sharing with women is always an extremely powerful experience. Mm -hmm. And the beauty of the internet that we could do this. <laughs> Isn't that right? Yes. Yeah. It kept us close and, and in touch, even though we couldn't necessarily see them face, like touch them. <laughs> right. And now it just allows our community to be global, really. Yes. Yeah. We can grow everything. And Plus, you can still communicate with the same people if you still stay in those groups and or just meet up every so often just to check in. So you were determined to change your mindset to be where you are now. Where did you start? Was that post-divorce or because you've taken therapy throughout so when did you start deciding that this was the path you were going to take? Well, I studied psychology in my undergraduate years at the University of Wisconsin. So I would say I've been fascinated with human, the human mind and human behavior. So, and I started my own therapy at the age of 18. And then I studied the psychology of work in graduate school at the London School of Economics. And I was studying organizational change, but in that often understanding what leaders needed to do in order to support an organization as it may be downsizing or merging or uh, acquiring a new aspect to the business. So it was always my interest and it still is today. I'm Right now I'm studying with rapid resolution therapy Another opportunity to, with the internet, able to learn online in a powerful new way. So I've been doing it my whole life. And I've also, in addition, been doing my own therapy and seeing shaman healers, attending support groups, and always listening to new, wonderful podcasts. I also try to digest great books and keep my mind, spirit, and body as clean as I can. How is sharing part of your story also part of your he healing? Great question. I feel that it is exactly where I'm supposed to be. And by going through these various experiences by the young age of 48, I am able to now have a great perspective to help other women understand who they're going to be in the face of it. And I learned a lot. A lot of my training really evolved, I would say, during the fertility journey when I got my coaching certificate and I went to Landmark Education and I began to really study and learn and evolve. And that's when I started to shift from working in a professional environment to individual coaching. And during that time, I was able to take a step back and it's something I have to do every day in meditation or journaling and my own self-talk, which is the power to choose who I'm going to be in the face of things to manifest my dreams and beyond. What happens when the pain is left unchecked? When the pain is left unchecked, it just shows up again and again in new people, in new situations, in new experiences. Until we really do the healing, that experience, that energy, that way that you behave is gonna show itself again. 
And there are so many people think, oh, well, I don't need therapy. <laughs> They're probably the well, ones that need it the most. Yeah. Well, I'm a life coach. <gasps> and so I would say maybe not everybody needs psychotherapy, depending on uh, where they may be in their life. But I would believe that all humans would operate at a, the next level with a life coach. And if you're a patient where I see a lot of women going through cancer or infer infertility, empowerment coaching allows you to be your own best advocate as a patient, which is why I'm also learning and fascinated with learning the skills of being your own patient advocate. Mm -hmm. So if you're meeting the doctor or the lawyer or the judge or wherever you may be in any of these traumas, perhaps or as you move up or change in the corporate environment, how can you show up in a place that is secure and empowered, that is confident, that's self-aware, and all of that will certainly impact your experience. What is the biggest lessons that you've learned through this journey? In recent years, I would say I've learned that I am enough. Mm, I love that. And everything is as it should be. And that as a human being, I'm going to have opportunities always to explore and grow. And yet my essence, who I am, is pure and it's love. And no matter where my body may go, I that is always there and it's eternal and that I can help myself through this journey. I love that. And what's your favorite part about coaching or being a life coach? It goes back to your question about healing. For me, I feel that I'm completely in flow when I am coaching or doing a group coaching event. It's when I'm able to finally use my experiences to help give others the opportunity to use these experiences to get to know themselves better, to know how magnificent they are, because each of us are precious. Each of us have a right to live purely, peacefully, that we are human, and we should be also in peace with just being hmm. and most people feel powerless in the face of change so what is a message you'd like to end with that can offer others hope i would say to always go back to your self-talk there's always 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 a place that you can find some gratitude always and i've been you know, in hospital beds, awaiting unknown news. I've faced some of the most horrific moments. And I promise that in those moments, you can still be fierce and you can still be vulnerable and you can still find some sort of gratitude. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for the opportunity.